Okay, so here we are on uh, lecture four, the uh, principles of development. And what we're going to do in this section is just sort of highlight some of the, the overall themes and some of the things that the uh, our discussions over the next few months are going to revolve around. So we've already talked about this idea that development is a progressive process and the fact that uh, new structures are going to develop gradually over time and the new structures will develop from pre-existing things. The other thing that we haven't really talked about that is true for this particular idea is that um, as structures develop and as these structures gradually come into being and build off of pre-existing ones, those pre-existing structures in an embryo tend to be much more general, much more basic than you would find in the, the organism later. And so, for example, we may end up with certain situations where something very general is going to show up early on and then a specialized feature will show up a little bit later. So uh, sometime during the course I'll show you a picture of hands as they develop on an embryo and so obviously as the limb develops early in the in development you're just going to have this tiny little bud that comes off of the embryo and then eventually it'll have a little paddle and eventually you'll just get these little nubs that uh, represent the fingers and slowly over time eventually those fingers will grow and the skeleton will form and of course all the muscles and everything is is going to be put in place as that uh, process unfolds over the course of development. So it starts out very general, general early on as just a limb bud, and then we create the limb, then we create the individual little fingers and so on. And so specialized features definitely are going to come from more generalized features in that way. So this is, I think, a really good summary of this whole progressive nature of development. We start out as a single cell, zygote, and as we'll see later, this doesn't necessarily imply that the, the zygote is all that simple. Um, each one of these little sections right here could correspond to an area of the cytoplasm that actually does have some things in it, organelles or components that are going to make it special relative to the other side. This, of course, will very quickly divide up into individual cells within the embryo, and of course, depending on how you separate that zygote up, you might end up with cells with different contents. They'll all have the same organelles, but the same kinds of uh, proteins and other molecular components that are gonna carry out function. Those may be specific to a cell type. And then, of course, over a longer period of time, that what we might call the blastula here goes through those processes that we'll get into more detail on gastrulation organogenesis morphogenesis and so on bottom line is is that this this organism with very specialized features came from a much smaller and much simpler relatively embryo and the kinds of cells that this contains so like in our case for us humans our bodies right now probably have between 200 and uh, 300 different cell types but back when we were at this stage in the embryo we might have had I don't know half a dozen dozen different cell types so simpler gives rise to more complex as development proceeds development is actually going to involve the complex interplay of at least five processes that you and I will consider in a lot more detail and a lot of these will come up early on here, the first third of the course is going to be talking a little bit more about cells than, than embryos per se. So we'll get into how these show up or are born out within the cellular context. So growth, of course, refers to any kind of increase in size. And in this case, it might be not just an increase in size, but an overall change in structure. So if you think about some of those specialized cell types like muscles, and neurons where growth as they extend and take on those shapes that specific to whatever their function is 
that would be considered growth. Um, growth is caused also by cell division of the embryo. So obviously we start as a zygote and then two cells, then four cells and work our way on up. And the organism is gonna grow just simply by the increase in the number of cells. These cells, as they come into being, will again grow and structurally become what they're supposed to become based on information in the body. So where they're located is going to determine what they become. So am I supposed to become a heart or a liver or a brain? All of these things are gonna be determined by the location of that cell in the context of the embryo itself. This is a process called cell differentiation. We'll talk about that quite a bit actually because it's a pretty important piece to this whole process. These guys then of course get organized. So we talked about organogenesis and morphogenesis. So all of that will take place as well. And then once we have all of those organs and the, the form of the embryo is beginning to develop based on those positions and functions within the embryo, the, the layout of that embryo is going to uh, basically unfold in what we call pattern formation. So pattern formation is going to be a process by which the, the layout of the different tissues and organs as they relate to each other is going to, going to take place. So the, uh, one of the most important pieces of that, so I'll just throw this in here, is going to be the symmetry and axes of the embryo. So a lot of the important events that take place early on in development are simply about laying out where the anterior and posterior ends are gonna be, what's gonna be the back, what's gonna be the, the stomach side. Um, lateral to medial would be from the middle to the side. And then uh, proximal distal is the axis that is going to apply the limb. So like proximal closer to the body and then distal would be further away. And so these are terms, of course, that become very important for us as we think about the anatomy of an embryo and how it's being built. Because, of course, you've got the three major axes, and then it's not really listed on this picture, but the proximal distal um, would kind of apply to something like a fin here, where proximal and distal. So for us, it would be our arms and our legs, and even the ears and nose. These kinds of things would have a a developmental pattern that would follow that axis. So another thing to be mindful of is these are going to also be terms that help us to basically feel our way around the embryo when in the context of the lab. And so you'll find out that the heart is more anterior to the liver, the pancreas might be more dorsal to the liver or more ventral to the liver. These are, these are terms, these axes are terms that allow us to basically build those relationships and understand how the embryo is put together. So definitely spend some time um, learning these four axes and know what they mean so that as, as you use them, you can really tell where things are located. All right, the last one I've already kind of mentioned, um, once your patterns are laid out, the last major sort of phase of development is that building of the form, building of the organs, and this is where sort of the layout of what the organism is going to look like is going to come into place. All of these things, so how it grows, how it differentiates, the patterns that are put in place, and the form and structure, the form in the form of uh, structure and shapes are going to be determined by the cell behaviors. So what cells are doing is going to largely control the, the kinds of things that they do in the embryo. So as we think about tissues and organs and all of those things that go into making this multicelled organism like our bodies, then all five of these are going to play a role and they're not all, it's not like one has to happen before the other. All of these are gonna be going on at different times there is roughly a, a time frame here. So obviously cell differentiation can happen until we have multiple cells and we can't put 
form and function in place until we've got our patterns and cells starting to become who they're supposed to become. But the bottom line is, is that uh, this zygote is going to become a multi-celled organism through these kinds of processes that those cells will undergo. And this is built into those cells based on their genetics, based on the, the signals that they're receiving and the information that they have, they are going to basically carry out this process of development and creating the new organism in, uh, in each round. And of course, tying off our life cycle, once we become the adult, we create our own gametes, they circle back around and start the process all over again for the next generation. Okay, so we'll spend quite a bit more time on each one of these, these uh, mechanisms. Obviously, the growth of cell division and cell differentiation will be early here in the cell stuff, and we'll save pattern formation and morphogenesis for later in the course when we talk more a little bit, a little bit more about the embryo as it develops later in, in the process. Okay, next time what we'll talk about is the relationship between development and evolution, because developmental patterns are very specific to species and can be used to um, show relationships between animals on an evolutionary timescale. So we'll talk about that then. Bye.